Welcome to Caramore live stream. My name is Jeff Hayden and I'm the CEO here at Caramore. You're joining us in the music room at the Rosen House at Caramore, built by Walter and Lucy Rosen during the Depression. As you can see, it's a pretty amazing room for music. I'm sorry you can't join us here live, but we're really grateful to have you in our extended virtual audience to enjoy this performance. Today's performance is our 2020 Schwab Vocal Rising Stars. These young artists have been working all week, uh, rehearsing with uh, artistic directors Stephen Blyer and Michael Barrett, as well as some additional coaches here at Caramore. As you can see, the lights just went out at Caramore. Um, and uh, they've been working very hard this entire week, and this weekend's performance is a culmination of all that work, and so we're really grateful that you could join us to support them in all of their efforts that they've been making. We're really grateful for the support of the, Ter the Terrence Schwab family. They created an endowment to support this program over 10 years ago. Terrence Schwab was a longtime trustee of Caremore and loved the vocal arts. Uh, and uh, he was inspired by the fact that uh, music has the ability to inspire us through most uncertain times. And I think he would agree that this is one of those times where we would all like a little bit more inspiration. So as long as we need to, we're going to continue providing these live stream performances here at Caramore. Uh, check your, our website, our social media, and your email to find out a little more information. We will have a performance next week at Sunday at 3 o'clock, so you can look for more information there. So without any further ado, please join me in welcoming the 2020 Schwab Vocal Rising Stars. Thank you.
Good afternoon and welcome to the Art of Pleasure. We're sorry to be playing to an empty hall, but very grateful after this beautiful week we've had up here in the Caramore Cocoon, our little residency, to be sharing the concert with you in the 2020 way over the internet. So uh, please uh, get in your jammies and, and please enjoy uh, this crazy program we've devised for you. I made this program a couple of years ago because it struck me that everyone was getting so tense that they needed to be reminded about what makes life beautiful, what makes life worth living. And those things are ongoing. We just have to remember to give them a little love and a little focus. And they're, they're there for you. I, I wish I could report that things have gotten less tense since 2018, but they have not. And so we are in a particularly uh, stressful period and the art of pleasure, not to mention the pleasure of art, is as paramount now as it has ever been. So we begin with uh, what I call the usual suspects, things that we all agree give us great pleasure. One of them, the ocean side at summer. Uh, be we began with that classic piece by Claude Debussy, En Bateau, from his Petite Suite, which he wrote when his publisher said, could you just write something with a tune? It might sell. And of course he did, and uh, the piece has become a perennial. We're going on now to three songs that come uh, from Barcelona. They're in Catalan. And we've had a blast working on the Catalan poems uh, with a wonderful teacher, Albert Carbonell, who coached us in the language. And we're starting with uh, Javier Montalache piece called Canso Amorosa. And uh, the poem is by Tomas Garcés, one of Catalonia's most famous, most beloved poets. He talks about wanting to take his beloved out on a beautiful moonlit boat ride. And they would, the air would smell of parsley, and uh, the stars would light, and they would see the St. Elmo's fire in the air. They'd pass the boats, but they would be beautifully snuggled up against one another.
The song, Cancel de Roulette, tells the story of a young cabin boy, about 15 years old, who is excited for his first big sea adventure. And just maybe, the chance to meet some young, beautiful ladies along the way. With music by Eduardo Toldra on a poem by Tomas Garces, here to sing it is the radiant soprano, Elaine David. Same composer, Toldra, but this time with text by Trinitat Catasus. Mach was composed when Toldra was very young and recently engaged, and it is perhaps the song where Toldra found his voice as a composer. This song is a description of a beautiful night in May, a time we all long for as the earth is coming back to life and love seems to be part of the air we breathe. But in the silver nights, Something is whispering to the flowers about an impending sadness because nothing this beautiful can last forever. Here to sing Mach is mezzo soprano Sienna Miller and Stephen Blythe.
next singer for you all. His name is Terence Chin Loy. He brings us a piece by a rather well-known King of Parlor composer named Paolo Tosti. Many tenors love singing his luxurious songs. He also happened to be Queen Victoria's personal piano teacher. This text with Salvatore di Giacomo writing his beautiful poetry. This is an ardent young lover and he sings to his sweetheart, Catherine, hoping that his gorgeous voice might just bring her downstairs for a dance. Let's see if he succeeds. <laughs> Accompagnare il suono, 
program, we're dealing with the usual suspects, I call them, things that everyone could agree on, give great pleasure and sustenance. One of those things is a very good night's sleep. Uh, I think we're all grateful to get some rest. I think we're even more grateful if we have beautiful dreams, that gorgeous technicolor multiplex that we visit every night rewards us with something really juicy and beautiful. But simply to find peace and uh, an escape from the stress of the world as, as it's presented to us is a, a great, great gift. We have two songs about sleep and dreams. I'll let Terence explain the first one to you. The first song in the set is Brahms's Ruhe süß Liebchen, the text coming from Ludwig Tieck's novel Die Schöne Magalona. In this song, I, as Count Peter, the novel's protagonist, sing a lullaby to my beloved, the Princess of Naples.
song by composer Rachmaninoff titled A Dream from his cycle of six songs for voice and piano, opus 38. It is the last cycle he ever wrote. He never set any Russian poem to music after he had fled from Russia to America. The song is based on a poem by Fyodor Sologub that portrays a dream as a living creature with two wings that carries itself through the peaceful night with lightness and tranquility, which is reflected in the piano part. And here with me, a soprano Elaine Daber will join me in performing this magical song.
going to end the first half with three looks at romance, three rather rosy looks at romance, uh, the pleasure part of romance. And we're going to start off with the tune by that one-hit wonder, Ruggiero Leon Cavallo. You probably remember him from Di Pagliacci. Not much else. I think Leon Cavallo did not always make the smartest career moves. Um, was not an unintelligent human being. Well, might have been. I don't even know. But he was kind of a career doofus. <laughs> and uh, I think that writing an opera based on La Boheme at the same time that Puccini was writing an opera based on La Boheme was an example of a not very smart move. But one thing Leon Cavallo could do was write a tune. And uh, in this serenade, uh, it's called Serenade Napolitaine, it's actually in French, we meet two young lovers. They have a, a, a kind of relationship that's got just a, a touch of um, pleasant antagonism. Um, I, I think of them as kind of Marcello Mastriani and Alemagnani, uh, <laughs> just a, a love pats that are just a little bit more than love pats. And uh, they are taunting each other and loving each other. And uh, I, I, I call it, uh, uh, I imagine what they're going to do right after this song.
The next couple have been together a bit longer. They are, in fact, Judita and her boyfriend, Octavio, from the Lehar operetta called Judita. It was the last operetta he ever wrote and the last work he wrote. Um, he aspired to something like Offenbach, a little more serious, longer, um, maybe not quite such a happy ending. Uh, he really wanted to write an opera, kind of did. But he also came up with a lot of great tunes. This is probably one of the two fantastic pieces from Judita, two or three. Uh, Judita is Italian. So is Octavio, actually. Um, she was married to a basso buffo, comic base. Now, in, in operated terms, that is known as a mixed marriage. <laughs> because a soprano and a buffo base won't have much to sing about after about 20 minutes. That's it. What she really wants is a tenor, who, of course, turns up. He's in the military. And she runs off with him. He gets posted off in North Africa. And that's where we find them. Um, I, I think of this duet as both pre and post coito. And uh, they, they sing of their love, their devotion to each other. But um, she asks him at the beginning, sweetheart, what, what's going on? What are you thinking about? Well, what he's actually thinking about is the fact that his regiment is being moved, and he can't take her along this time. So he's going to have to leave her in northern Africa on her own. That is not what he says to her. She says, what do you think about, darling? And he says, you. <laughs> I'm thinking about you, you, and only you, and how beautiful she is, and how the stars shine above them. And they, uh, you can hear in the music, um, it's, it's basically a tango, which uh, in Viennese operated terms stands in for North Africa. <laughs> exotic enough. It's exotic enough. Um, anyway, uh, one thing you can hear, though, is that these two people are having quite a beautiful love affair. I 
song for you on this half of the program, and then we'll just take a short pause, so don't disappear. This is by John Musto. The poetry is by W.H. Auden, and Auden first uh, wrote this poem, um, and Benjamin Britten took it and set it to music. Benjamin Britten has a beautiful history with Caramore, where we are now. His three canticle operas had their U.S. premiere here in the 1950s under Julius Rudell right out here in this courtyard, just before my time. I'm sorry I missed it, but I'm sure it was magical. Well, Britain, of course, was uh, you know, very, very British. And uh, the title of the piece, Calypso, and I think some of the cadence of the language, well, let's just say he said it in a rather British way. Um, our friend John Musto was commissioned by us, the New York Festival of Song, in 1996 to create a piece for four singers and four hands at one piano. And Mr. Musto, with his New York sensibilities, kind of got the island thing, and we're going to go just a little south of Florida and get the real flavor of Calypso, set uh, to the words of W.H. Auden. Here we go. <laughs>
That piece is one of my all-time favorite things to play, <laughs> particularly when I have a wonderful partner like Mr. Sean Chang. Thank you, Sean, for everything. Thank you. You've been great. And you will continue to be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's by Oscar Piazzolla. It's called Fuga in Misterio, which describes <laughs> my life most of the time. <laughs> Fugue and mystery. Um, and it is, I think, the prelude to Piazzolla's tango operida, his tango operetta, Maria de Buenos Aires. And it introduces a section of songs that I call the down low. And these are love affairs that fall slightly outside the bounds of what uh, your parents might think of as the norm. Certainly my parents would not have thought of it as the norm. And therefore, you might not want your parents to know about them, and whatever much pleasure they give you. So we uh, start off this section with the song by Jonathan Dove, a little poem by Lady Mary Montague. And this poem is a very erotic fantasy about being in bed with another person. It's quite explicit. The poem is, it's a Renaissance poem, and it's called Between Your Sheeps. This is way before that phrase was used with fortune cookies. It's the real deal. And she uh, goes on about all the delights of this other woman that lie hidden beneath the sheets. The thing is, the, the poem is by a woman, so we're, we're talking uh, a rather sapphic ode here. And uh, Jonathan Dove has given it a hypnotically beautiful setting with an ostinato that goes from beginning to end. It is the prelude to the next song, which is by Leonard Bernstein, written in somewhere in the early 40s, not sure exactly when. Whenever you find one of those early Lenny songs from the trunk, everyone always says, oh, you know, it was a sketch for uh, Out of Town, the 1944 Broadway musical. Well, uh, it's been, I got it on pretty good authority that this was actually not a sketch for Out of Town, it's just something that Bernstein was working on. I think maybe he was, um, thinking about the blues and how to write the blues and uh, made a rather beautiful one with his own lyric. Um, it's called It's Gotta Be Bad to Be Good. And frankly, that may also have been something Lenny had on his mind at the time. So we will meet our two singers, uh, Sienna Miller and Elaine Daver. I'll spare you the adjectives, um, <laughs> except that they're <coughs> Divine creatures, both of them.
That thought was by Ray Davies, appropriately enough, of the kinks. <laughs> um, it brings us to our next section of songs. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I read that Lola was based on something that actually happened to their manager when they were on tour. One very, very drunken night, he uh, thought he was really, really getting lucky. <laughs> and he was, <laughs> just not in the way he thought he was. <laughs> but who knows, perhaps it was just lyrically wonderful. Uh, we, we move on now, though, to uh, did I call this section? Um, it, it's really about guilty pleasures, things that um, you do, you, you know they're not maybe the best thing in the world, and you don't like to tell everyone about them, but let's face it, they're somewhere between habits and compulsions and obsessions. Starting with this tune, by the great Tom Lehrer, whose songs graced my early years, and perhaps many of yours, but uh, none of my cast members knew of Tom Lehrer, so nice to pass the torch on with this perennial classic. song by Lieber and Stoller. Uh, this duo is responsible for the Elvis Presley hit Hound Dog, among others performed by the star. Later, they penned a vast repertoire of cabaret songs, such as Is That All There Is? This song is a hymn to binge watching. Come 
Scene is from a modern classic, The Craigslist Leader, composed by Gabriel Kahane in 2006 with texts from real life Craigslist ads. Opera Scene is the final song of this cycle and it is certainly a scene. In fact, it could be described as a full cantata. It has recits and arias, all of that. In it, a man is looking for a roommate in his beautiful and cheap New York City apartment. But there is, as there always is, a catch. Here it is, featuring Thomas West and Sean Chang. Hello, potential roommates. I come to you today with an offer you might not be able to refuse. I have available a large furnished room on the first floor of a three-story walk-up in the heart of the East Village, 4th Street and 2nd Avenue. Bed, desk, wardrobe, and air conditioning come with the room. $550. Includes all utilities. You may be wondering why the price is so low. Well, here's the twist. I'm 25 with a slight social problem, which to some make me an undesirable roommate. I may 
can become somewhat annoying. I think that covers it. My current roommate is leaving at home then with her boyfriend. But before that, we had a success. silence, feelings of contentment, safety, oneness with the world, a lack of worry about anything, peace. These pleasures feel particularly difficult to apply right now, but we must continue to aspire to them. This afternoon, we bring you three songs on this subject. First up, we have Let Us Love, Let Us Sleep, Without Dreaming or Thinking of the Rest of the World, Aimons Nous by Camille Saint-Saëns on a poem by Théodore Pauline de Bonville. For love is indeed stronger than the gods and death. Here to sing it is the always soothing 
Terence Chinloy. Introduce it. I just wanted to say a, a word of thanks to Michael Barrett, who uh, really had the idea for this whole program. 
and saw it through, and to Eileen Schwab, our marvelous godmother, off watching this uh, live stream in Maryland. Um, to everybody at Paramore for welcoming us here. It's a very special week, and it has, I dare say, never been more special or more precious than this year. I mean, none of us knows quite when we'll be making music for the audience again. Uh, we know we will. I'm hoping it will be soon. But for the moment, we're, uh, we're in a slight bit of a, a hold or a temporary void. And uh, this idea of the technology that allows us to do the work we do here and still perform it for an audience. I'm told that uh, as of current time, the amount of listeners that were tuned in was exponentially more than would have ever fit in this hall. <laughs> so maybe we're onto something here. <laughs> I'm grateful that Caramore uh, got up to speed technologically, proud of everybody, and very grateful to my cast. Um, now, uh, before I get more emotional, I'll introduce this song. Uh, as I said, it was called Heaven. It's by the Broadway and Off-Broadway uh, composer and lyricist, Michael John Lacusa. And the way I learned about this song was a couple of years ago, we had our 30th anniversary and our 30th anniversary gala. And I asked every cast member to think of songs that had some relationship to 30. We did songs by Sondheim, born in 1930. Um, we did songs written 30 years ago. We even did a song from Annie Get Your Gun because the last time Ethel Merman sang Annie Get Your Gun at Lincoln Center, her leading man was exactly 30 years younger than she. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cougar, get your gun. <laughs> Anyway, um, I mentioned also as a possible, how about a song that you think will be still sung 30 years from now? And Barry Testa, uh, a favorite artist of mine, um, brought me this song. And I don't know if it was written for her. It might have been. But it's certainly become very much part of her repertoire. It's a very beautiful, visionary song. Um, and I know that it's durable because two artists more different than the extremely earthy um, Mary Testa and the extremely ethereal Sienna Miller could not be imagined. And yet they both live in this gorgeous piece, Heaven, Michael John Lacusa. Just give me a, a second to put on my reading glasses, which I have been too vain to wear for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> but I'm afraid that I will have a fiasco if I don't read for this song. Ourselves out of love. 
that we are not alone. This is the greatest honor to sing for you all and around the world, and we hope that you carry this in your heart moving forward uh, to remind yourself that you really are never alone. <laughs> so thank you, and take good care. Happy, sorry, Terence, human nature. 
Watching actors never reach the ending of their Oscar speech. Shot and Brian. 